I'm Tony Riley and I am on the Online Prosperity Show and we are going to be talking about how Soul Life Courses can transform your life. Now, Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show and today I've brought you the Soul Life creator, Tony. Tony, how are you doing, my love? Hi, Prosper. I'm doing really well, thank you. I'm really happy to be on here with you. Fantastic. Obviously, viewers, if you're watching this show, be prepared for in-depth knowledge about how you can actually transform your personal growth. I fished out Tony after looking at some of her work, her books, since she is a best-selling author of books such as Awake, which we're going to be talking about uh, later on. She's also the creator of the Tony Riley Institute and also a program called Soul Life Coaching and seminars and also training. So if you're about to leave the room, get back to your seat because now you're going to uh, be transformed and your personal growth is just going to be leveled up just a little bit. Tony, thank you so much for your time on the show today. Welcome. Absolutely. Now, Tony, obviously, you being the creator of Soul Life Coaching, it comes with trials and tribulations and you are not always looking as joyful and as happy as you are right now. Tell us a little bit about your backstory and um, what brought you to become, you know, the best-selling author and the creator of these programs as you are today. Okay, so, so that I don't take too long, the brief story is in about my mid-30s, which is um, a while ago now. Yesterday? I, okay. Yeah, not too long ago. But in about my mid-30s, I had been married for a long time, like 15 or 16 years, had three little kids, and I had started to become restless, I suppose, and soul-searching and wondering what my life was actually all about. So... All of that soul searching, I suppose, over a few years led me to uh, split up from that marriage. And what transpired from that was my life just took a whole entirely new direction. And I became, I'm going to say interested, but actually obsessed with, uh, with meditation and intuition. And in the process of developing those parts of me, um, which I had been told were very strong, though I hadn't realized. So I started to develop my intuition and I was to meditate. That was some guidance I was given. And when I found a meditation teacher, she let me come and bomb their meditation classes and I couldn't go enough. It was very mainstream from my perspective. So we were in this ladies' lounge room with a bunch of other everyday type people like me. And uh, what happened when we would meditate is I started to, I guess it's where my self-awareness started because I became aware of my, I'm going to call them issues. So insecurities, basically. So I didn't think at that time in my life that I had any issues. I just didn't ever think about anything like that. And uh, anyway, it became really clear to me that I did have plenty of them. So, and that meditative process spelt them all out for me and just made me realize why I behaved the way that I did. And um, it intrigued me also to research myself, other people, my kids, and just get a deeper meaning on people and how they work and why they do the things that they do. So that's it. That's how it all started. Absolutely. And thank you so much for sharing that story with us there, Tony, because without awareness, without, you know, a trajectory of where one is supposed to be going, then you, you, you know, your, your life is without hope, without fulfillment, and you live without a purpose. Now, looking at you right now, you're bubbly, you're full of purpose, you're confident, full of love, you're healthy, and I'm supposing the relationships you lead now, um, you know, fulfilling what what then really really got you to want to change because what was happening before looked and seemed okay but what was that one thing that made you realize what you were going through was you know um, not not fulfilling and you had to take um, a transformational um you know process to yourself there 
I think if I had to boil it down to one thing, it was that I realized I wasn't being myself. And at that point, I had no idea what it meant to be yourself. A statement like that or um, live your truth they would make me go, what does that mean? But Absolutely. I actually realized what it meant to not be yourself because I, it, I, I just became made, or I became aware that I had been not being anything like I really am. I guess I became very squashed in my, in my life. I allowed it to happen. And within that um, realization was the most incredible liberation that, nobody did anything to me i kind of did it to myself and yeah i guess it became clear even as to why why i let myself become so lost or squashed oppressed is what i was <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. you you did mention something that um being yourself because at the end of the day if people actually knew what they were supposed to do or be they would go on and do it yes and they don't quite grasp that who they are right now is not serving them now yeah. given your particular instance and your particular history and where you are right now what would you have been missing out on had you not discovered yourself Oh my goodness, that was something I pondered so much when I made my decision, big decision to, um, to make that change and leave that marriage. But, um, well, I guess I was thinking, what would it be like to be still living like this in five years time? That's what I was thinking. And I had to think, oh, I just can't do this. I don't want to do it. And um, it was enough to really, I guess, propel me forward with courage to make the change. Because it was a big thing to change, you know, fear of people judging me and was I going to mess my kids up for life and you know when you get married you're going to stay married so I was breaking all of these um I guess values and beliefs that I had and um actually it was liberating so scary to take the plunge but to do it and afterwards it's like why did I wait so long but anyway it's all hindsight's a, a very wise thing Absolutely. A lot of people stay where they are, Tony, because of fear. Yeah. And it raises a, a couple of points that are just easy to, to, to relate to people because you, when you're married, you got to stay married. Um, you do it for the kids. Um, when you're in, in whatever job or position you're in, you do it for the bills, you do it for the mortgage. Otherwise, fear will come and bite you in the wrong places. Now, how do you help people get over that and actually start living a life with purpose with a lot of confidence, love, and, you know, have healthier relationships without fear. I, I think basically it has to start with them basically researching their personality because I believe at the core, there are parts of us that we cannot change. So best we look at, look at ourselves and be okay with, the amazing and the not so amazing things about ourselves and i think that is the first key to to overcoming fear and then because we understand our personality uh and our our needs through that innate personality traits then we can start looking at what is it that uh that we really are afraid of so whether it's security or really needing security or uh needing to be loved supported or you know all the many things that that we're scared, worrying about what people think, uh, all of these things, thinking we're dumb, all of things like that, that once you look at your personality and go, I'm actually pretty good, then people's esteem just rises up and they feel, well, good, more confident. And I guess for some people it can be really catalyst and a uh, massive change happens or an epiphany. And for others, there's still a little bit of work to do. And actually, I don't know if it ever stops, but there's certainly a massive push in them realizing that they're, they're valuable. They're a valuable person. Absolutely. Congratulations on your bestseller um, uh, status with your book, Awake. Yeah. Um, you know, the purpose of life and why we're here. Now, Tony, why are we actually here? Right? <laughs> um, well, from my studies of myself, and those around me and all the people that I worked with, thousands of them, 
I surmised that we are here to experience emotion. So that's my nutshell um, reason why we're here. I think we get all carried away and think that we're going to have some massive purpose to, you know, influence the world or, you know, make it a healthier planet. All of those things do count. But on an individual level, all of us are here to experience emotion. That's what I believe we're here for. And that... Then when you start to look at your life circumstances, the happy, the sad, the ups and downs, the traumas, all of those things, you can break it down and see what the purpose of them was. So, and, and then you can be okay or peaceful with things that have happened in your life and stop feeling a victim of them and rather look at it and go, that's why that happened. And then you can, I think you just get freer and more peaceful with yourself and with life stop worrying so much that's what happens absolutely i'm you know just looking at you the whole vibe going on <laughs> um I'm, I'm actually just hoping you're not going to just jump up and start playing that guitar behind you because of the energy that's all <laughs> coming on inside of you right now so i mean and also thank you and those that are watching you can actually see that it is possible to be doing half a happier existence and it is possible for you to actually look whale deep inside of you and remind yourself of what your purpose really is and what you are at, um, here to do and there's people like tony that are viscerally um you know putting out content books and seminars and also um you know educational material that would actually help you to achieve your life goals your life purpose and actually be do and have a happier existence now you know what uh, tony i came in from zimbabwe and i don't know where you know if you know where that is and mm -hmm. one of one of my values really really is um i gotta leave i gotta learn and i gotta contribute right and um part of what it is that you do and you teach is all about realigning oneself with their contribution and their purpose um to life and that comes up in the form of the soul life um you know courses and that uh, um you know, um, uh, uh, seminars that you do. One of them is called magic. All right. Are we doing abracadabra stuff when we come to your <laughs> course or are we doing Houdini stuff? Are we hiding our emotions or is that the magic? Uh, now you see them. Now you don't. What actually happens at, uh, well, at actually now you see them. Now you don't is a really cute thing to say, but the magic is actually when people realize that they're worthwhile, really deep down that they're worthwhile it's like magic for them because it just is because um i don't know i guess then they're not no longer beating themselves up as much and thinking that they're pretty good and um i think that's magic so you know to not get up worrying about what are uh, you know everyone's thinking of you and I mean, I know we have much more, much more fear within us than that, but to, to get up peaceful a lot of the time and, and live life having fun, realizing that the, the fun things are there to be enjoyed. We don't have to beat ourselves up for liking certain things. And also that even the lows have credence as well. So that's kind of, I think that's magic because it feels magic when the liberation strikes for an individual absolutely I, I i i don't know if you can tell the magic going on around <laughs> <laughs> that when when you you are actually waking up doing the things that you love for the people that you actually love and it just all just seems um very yeah magical it's it's a it's a it's a different euphoria and a different place to be and thank you so much for bringing that um out to people so obviously once you've got that in place as a person, obviously you're going to be interacting with people, uh, maybe teams or the people that you're working with. And if you own a business, it's the people that you're employing, the people that actually work for you. Uh, Tony, you also have, um, you know, the people power um, aspect to your uh, contribution. What, what, what is that all about? Um, is it being very strong enough to help other people when they fall or what happens when people power comes through people power is um developed for the corporate arena so essentially it's about well it's not about we going we go into corporate environments teams small teams big teams and particularly if they're in any turmoil or they're you know backstabbing each other gossiping or annoyed at this one all of that kind of thing that can happen or even maybe where some people are feeling threatened by the skills of that one or undermined by that one. If they start 
within people power if we go in and again just show each person their individual good stuff and the things that they can't change then we become a lot more tolerant of everyone around us and then also in so instead of thinking that this person is specifically trying to annoy you or me um you realize Oh, no, they just do things slow. It's the way that they are. And and then you can stop being annoyed at them for just being the way that they are. So that's kind of what the people power thing. Again, it's about people realising what they're, what they're like at the core and other people being more tolerant of that and in themselves. And then they can all be doing what they're really good at and not... Um, not forcing themselves into something that they're not really wired for because that's when anxiety steps in and people start feeling really insecure. So, you know, like if you're working as an accountant but you're actually super creative, it's it can potentially be soul-destroying. But um, they've never thought that they were creative and um, maybe that this person may be feeling anxious every day because they don't really like what they're doing or, or even hate it. I mean, that's just an example, but that's the power of the people power, which is getting to know yourself and loving other people, just being tolerant of them, be kind to them, not being so annoyed. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is like magical, um, you know, notes coming out from a symphony <laughs> of soul life right there <laughs> and back back to you at the studio. Now, seriously, Tony, this has been amazing. Um, you know, just talking to you for the last, say, 20, 20, 15, 20 minutes has just, you know, brought me to realize that it actually begins with self-awareness to actually, you know, discover the version of yourself that you need to liberate of maybe your thoughts of self-doubt, you know, yeah. that are fueled with lack of confidence or fear around whatever it is that you're doing, the relationships, if you're not nurturing them, et cetera, et cetera. And I think the audience has also noticed that you can actually create an environment where you can be empowered with the people that are actually ready to perform a team that you can create and the people that are actually um, understanding you to help you have either a business that's profitable and enjoyable yes. or a life that is full of happiness and full of life. Now, Tony, if somebody is just sitting at the edge of their seat right now and hoping that they can be in touch with you, um, you know, so they can get a glimpse of, you know, uh, or just touch the ham, feel the energy <laughs> and the happiness that you actually are exuding. What's the best way that people can actually uh, get a hold of you? They can get a hold of me through my website, which is tonyreillyinstitute.com. Um, so all of the details are on there. There's a little bit about the courses or, that is on there as well. Um, I, I answer my emails and uh, they can certainly reach out through that. And of course, I'm on social media all the time. So I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and um, uh, Instagram and all of those. So yes, I'm all over the place. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I know it's a Friday. You could be doing better things out there in the Sunshine Coast, but you did decide to spend some time with us here. You know, if you're watching this show right now, you see when you operate at your optimum capacity, um, you know, at whatever personal level, business or whatever it is, you're actually empowered, um, you know, and you exude positive energy throughout the workplace, throughout the family, throughout wherever you are, doors start opening and people actually just, you know, throw themselves in front of you and those of a lower frequency are just not going to be around you and you don't want that, right? So it, in it instantly increases your own performance and the performance of those people around you. And I think Tony has just elaborated to us what her work really is what she does and who she does it for. Now, at the end of the day, we are slowly getting into the new year. Tony, would you have any last sort of words for people that are struggling right now with their New Year's resolutions and um, hoping that 2018 is going to be the year that they break through, but they just need that one little push, you know, from the soul life coach herself? Okay. This might be a bit of a different one to what people usually say, but... I'm about following your intuition. So when you are actually following an idea that's really sent for you and you're supposed to do something with it, an idea of, you know, a, a changing something, whatever it might be, the compulsion is so strong that you're compelled to follow through with it. So I think that 
um, trust that and follow it and don't let anyone's opinions distract you. It doesn't matter whether you want to eat healthy or if you want to um, leave your job or, you know, start a whole new brand, whatever it might be for the year, just follow that intuition. And I also am a big believer in sometimes when you don't feel motivated, then it's probably telling you that you need, you need to take it easy. And also maybe p pursuing that line could be not beneficial that day or not beneficial for another week. And also sometimes there's stuff happening in the background, universal background, I mean. So sometimes we've just got to wait for it to all catch up. So basically what I'm saying is, be kind to yourself. Follow the compulsion and occasionally if you don't have it, let yourself off the hook and don't do anything for a day or a week, whatever. Happy New Year too. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, this has been fantastic. I enjoyed creating this in as much as I hope you also had a fantastic uh, time watching this. Now, this is the time you get to subscribe to the show because at the end of the day, people like Tony... Um, I'm just coming out here to dish out all this information of which you would be paying for if you did not come through this channel. So just give us a comment. Let us know what you actually thought about this episode and also subscribe to this channel because we're going to be having people like Tony coming in, giving us their um, you know, expertise um, freely like that with smiles. Those come in a little bit, um, you know, <laughs> extra. But thank you so much for tuning in. And Tony... I can't thank you enough for your time, your level of expertise, and especially your story right at the beginning of the show um, that you gave us um, there. And also the last imparting words that you gave us there. Thank you so much for your time, Tani. Thanks, Prosper. Absolutely. Great.